Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Have we been debated on the performance figures of the 9700 XT and other RDNA 4 class GPUs? This is a fascinating rumor that's currently floating around that the RDNA 4 uh, GPUs can go up to spitting distance of the RTX 4080. Now, I have to say that this is very interesting for a number of different reasons because Theoretically, this will put a ton of pressure on NVIDIA's RTX 50 graphics cards. Now, obviously, RTX 4080 is not going to be in the same performance as, let's say, a 5080, but a 5070, it's almost certainly. A 5070 Ti, maybe. So, perhaps we'll see more honest, quote-unquote, prices for NVIDIA. And it will also be extremely interesting to see if Intel released the high-end battle mage parts to see exactly what happens in this mid-range battle. With that said, where do we get this new information? Well, uh, if you've been following along with leaks for any length of time, you'll probably know about the Chinese forum Chip Hell. There's a lot of leakers that you know, basically find themselves at home there, including one who has a pretty good track record, Zhang Zhonghao. And they claim that the RTX um, 5080 is only around 5% faster than the RX 9700 XT. Furthermore, and by the way, I want to give credit to HXL on Twitter for initially discovering this, uh, but furthermore, they state that the TDP, or TBP, excuse me, is 265 watts for the base model. Obviously, this can change, but 265 so far. However, AIB custom models can go all the way up to 330 watts, which obviously is quite a bit higher. However, it's only around 60 watts, and it's... 330, it's a lot of juice, but I wouldn't say it's totally out of control. And again, that would be a kind of figure where, you know, it would be a high-end, you know, custom RDNA 4 card. So it should be okay in terms of heat and stuff like that, because they're not just going to allow this on like a, a really basic stock cooler, of course. Furthermore, the clock frequency is 2.8 gigahertz, but can go up to 3.1-ish um, when boosting. Now, I think 3.1, honestly, and this is my guess, I don't know this for certain, but I think 3.1 is probably going to be pretty conservative uh, with the custom cards. It's not exactly, it's not exactly so high that you would be like, oh my goodness, RDNA 3 hit 3 gigahertz or something like that, obviously. And so, you know, a lot of folks get that kind of clock frequency, roughly speaking, with like a 7900 XT or something like that. And so I, I, I wouldn't be surprised with a little bit of tweaking and, uh, you know, a little bit of know-how once people start to get to know the architecture, perhaps, or maybe even just pretty simply out of the box, just crank some sliders. We could see more. Obviously, I can't confirm that yet. The cards are not out, but... I certainly wouldn't be surprised indeed. I will be very interested though if this is true. And it also comes in to question what the heck is going on with the previous leaks. You may recall that a Twitter user, All The Watts, recently leaked some scores including Time Spy. And basically speaking, we were looking at, I'm going to round up the scores for my sanity, but you can see them on screen, around 23,000 for the 9070 XT. And this would put this card, roughly speaking, at the same kind of level that you would expect from many other GPUs, such as, for example, the um, RTX 3090 Ti would be around 22,000. You would see around maybe 21,000 for an RTX 4070, and so on and so on. So, obviously, that's quite a bump. Now, it is worth noting that, first of all, the scores that are allegedly within 5%, according to Zhang Zhonghao, we don't know the test conditions. So that's obviously a really big thing. Like what resolution? Is there ray tracing involved? What about upsampling? What about general quality settings? And so on and so on. And obviously that can have a really big and meaningful impact in the performance versus, you know, one architecture to another. So it's going to be very interesting because obviously we are very likely to see FSR 4 announced at this event. Now, whether it actually gets launched at this event 
we'll have to wait and see but i'll be very interested to see what amd actually brings forward with fsr4 and also if dlss4 is also announced from nvidia Regarding the whole neural rendering thing, by the way, just as a quick aside, I've asked several people at this point if they've heard anything about NVIDIA actually announcing neural rendering at CES, and I was told no one's heard anything. So that doesn't mean it won't happen, because again, there were those leaks that neural rendering is a feature of RTX 50, but it's possible it's either going to come later, or it's possible NVIDIA really are keeping this thing a secret, and my sources simply haven't heard of it, or it's possible that that original post was just a mistake. So we'll have to wait and see on that again until it's official from NVIDIA or, you know, any of these companies, Intel, AMD, Sony, Xbox, whatever. It doesn't actually exist. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. But what about the time spy score, score as well? One person did tell me that there was a driver that is floating around and basically speaking it nerfs the performance and the whole purpose of this driver basically speaking is for tests to be conducted and just to make sure that the gpu essentially is all good um, now how it's nerfing it, i'm not certain i believe it's clock frequency unfortunately i can't get this confirmed so it's possible also that the scores from all the watts were simply incorrect it's possible that they were done on an older version of hardware, i.e. there was just something hinky going on with the BIOS, maybe it wasn't boosting correctly, maybe there was an error, and you know what I mean, it's, it could be a hundred things, guys, like, for all we know, there was like a, an issue with the actual, it could be an engineering sample, there's a specific issue, it just, it just craps out on a specific, you know, specific thing, and it's just like, oh, well, you know, that's just going to affect the score, right? It could be a hundred things, it could be that the body cooler wasn't mounted properly, right? It's like, it's just a test condition, the clock frequency could be diminished, it could be, as I've been hearing, a driver thing, where AMD provide a driver and it's purposefully nerfing the performance of the GPU. Either way, at this point, if it does, roughly speaking, at least at stock settings, match an RTX 4080, and let's presume, and give it the benefit of the doubt just for a second, that this is raster performance, I actually am pretty positive about that, because presumably, you should be able to overclock this some. Like, I don't think you're going to be able to get like 30 extra percent on the card, obviously, but 5%? I think you could match that. So ultimately, if AMD can release a card that's at a good price, and that's the key, right? Like, if they release this GPU and it's like $900, no one's going to go for it. But $500, $600, AMD could have a really good thing going here. I'm very curious, though, to see how AMD market these cards. Um, with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.